Hey everyone, welcome to our coffee chat. This is the lead up to Summit. We are just three days away from Summit. It's our big event, our big milestone, and we are super excited to have all of you gather virtually as we mark this great moment in our Neho history. 20 years of collective impact, 20 fantastic years. 63 members from all parts of the world, 27 summits, 27 summits. Now with me today is Elizabeth Joroge, and she is with Christian Aid UK, and she is an information communications technology business partner. We want to have a virtual chat whereby we get to see what Christian Aid UK's impact story is about. We also get to know more about their interaction as a member of NEHOPE, but also what Elizabeth and the larger member community is expecting this summit. Elizabeth, welcome to the coffee chat. Thank you so much. Elizabeth, for some of our listeners and viewers that do not know the impact that Christian Aid UK is trying to achieve, what is that impact that the organization wishes to achieve? Thank you, Tegan, for having me today and glad to be talking about the work that Christian Aid has been doing. We are a partnership of people, churches and local organizations committed to ending poverty worldwide. We do work with local partners and um, advancing the localization of bringing up and ensuring that we have resilient communities so that they can be able to better support themselves. From community health, where we are we are working on one of our, of our global fund project in Malawi to end HIV, to inclusive markets where we are supporting Nuki Hubs, one of the social enterprise, to market linkages all the way from um, issuing of, of, of beehives collecting of that honey and marketing and sell of that honey so that the, the beekeepers can be able to have livelihoods. To voice and governance, where we are speaking truth to power and ensuring that good governance is available in the countries that we operate, for instance, in Kenya, where, where we are talking about um, climate change at the forefront right now, having our teams from Kenya represented in the COP26 that is happening in Glasgow, as we take our, our, our voices there so that the climate dis discussion can go on and we can have ad adaptation methods within Kenya to resilience and, and, and climate change, but also to agenda and empowerment and inclusion through our side-to-side -side movement that has been quite a formidable um, movement that is changing and having an inclusion and equal distribution of power at the heart of poverty within the various countries of operation. And, uh, and the last and not the least is our humanitarian response. We have been able to respond to various humanitarians, the, the latest being the, the Haiti earthquake that happened, um, I think a couple of months ago, to what we have had, the floods happening in Kenya, to Afghanistan, to what we are having within Bangladesh and the floods that are happening. But those are just the few that I would like to mention that Christian Aid has been putting its work within. It's been 75 years since Christian Aid started, and we believe together we can be able to have a formidable force that will end poverty globally. Elizabeth, thank you so much for sharing. A couple of things I picked up from the diversity in the impact that Christian Aid UK wants to achieve is that together we can, together we can. And that those three words are important because as a community of the different you know, members, different organizations from all walks of life, we all gather under this idea, this belief that when we leverage technology, we can use it as a force for good. Now, as a member of the NetHope community, 
how would you describe the relationship between Nehope and Christian Aid UK and how beneficial has it been in terms of using that relationship to achieve large impact? Well, as I've mentioned, Christian Aid has been in existence for 75 years. I may not have been there to celebrate the, the whole 75 years, but in my three years that I have been with Christian Aid, I have seen uh, the collective impact that Christian Aid has been able to benefit over the years. Just to mention there are uh, a few that I have been part of, and some of my former colleagues who used to be uh, there have all, also been, been, been able to respond and support. So one of them is um, through NetHop, we were able to support our Sierra Leone country office during the Ebola crisis. This was through the setup of their connectivity infrastructure to support the response back there. And that's one of the great examples that has been happening and replicated over the years as we handle the disaster. Another one that I would like to, to share is on um, the humanitarian response training that has been offered over the years that was being run by Rami Chakra. Um, it's one of the training that has been very fundamental in ensuring that the teams have the requisite skills that are required to respond in that disaster. So whenever a disaster strike, what we have seen happen is that the communication always is cut off. So, and that's where NetHope and, and, and Christian Aid, when we are doing our disaster response comes in. So how then can you be able to set up and restore communication easily and quickly? So those skills that our teams have been able to develop have been instrumental for Africa, for Asia, Middle East and Latin America that they have been able to support during our humanitarian response. But one thing I would like to also let um, the member organization know is NetHope has invested so much in ensuring that this training happen. But whenever a disaster strikes, organizations are not very keen to send or rather to volunteer their trained staff to be able to respond in the in the rota. So I would call all members whenever some of these trainings are offered, let also be ready to turn up to stand up and also uh, form part of the of the NetHope uh, response team. And one last one, perhaps that I can be able to also say that Christian Aid has been able to to benefit from the NetHope engagement is on the chatbot, chatbot development. And this was through a funding, a grant funding through NetHope and Microsoft. So I've, I've been at the center of developing the chatbot at the moment. For once I've become a chatbot developer. I did used to love programming, but right now with the no code skills that Microsoft is offering has made me being able to become a chatbot developer. And I've been able to develop a chatbot for Christian Aid that is helping us in our technical support. So that's one of them. And perhaps during the pandemic, we've also seen the collective force and the collaboration between the tech space that have come out here and, uh, and provided their grants to be able for people to respond to the pandemic. And one of them that Christian Aid has been able to benefit is on the Twilio grant. And we managed to get 20,000 USD of product credit that you can be able to use for our for our COVID information uh, within Kenya as one of the project, and hopefully that you can be able to extend this to the other countries that we operate. Perhaps let me end there, but I believe there are so many other things that those who have gone before me or from the previous 75 years that they can be able to, to add. And I think one last one, because that was, I think, the major one that you've been able to see is the transformation of our core infrastructure through Meraki. I think that was one of the biggest discounts that we managed to get as an organization. And I think most of the member organization were able to get that to migrate from the, from the myriad and the mix of the infrastructure that people had to just having one single point of interaction for our connectivity and infrastructure in our various country offices. So thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. There's this famous saying that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And throughout this entire journey of collective, you know, chain, collective impact, there's a need for 
each of us to rely on our networks, but also our skills collectively to get to that destination. Now with the NetHope member community, there is this sense of diversity, this sense of inclusion, you know? So what exactly is this sense of belonging and how has it been very helpful in terms of getting new ideas running? So now, for example, we have the Africa chapter. Now we have a diverse list of speakers from different organizations. Why is this sense of inclusion important for achieving collective impact? I believe um, having seen NetHope for the last, I think, seven or eight years now, I can say it's been a great journey and we have made great milestones in terms of ensuring there is inclusivity. As we began, NetHope was mainly a CIO kind of um, a project or program, if you may. And uh, over the years, we have seen more people, more field, uh, more field people. I call them our foot soldiers because these are the people that are the heart of where our solutions from our headquarters are taken. They are the users of our technology solutions. So if the technology is made from our headquarters, for instance, for our case, which is UK, for another one, US, and, and the like, and the list can go on. The users of those solutions are usually at our country offices, at our very remote offices. Think of it, Mogun in Nigeria, Trukana in Kenya. Um, you can think of, of, of uh, Afghanistan, Herat in, in Afghanistan. You can think of all those places. So having a diverse um, group of people and now this being the field team members, it means then we are getting the problems. So, and with the right problem and the user requirement, then it means we can be able to develop solutions that are helpful to our to our impact and also to our beneficiaries. So, in that in that sense, we are able to create more impact because I think before what we would see <laughs> is a solution uh, brought on board but doesn't work or probably doesn't suit the the beneficiaries there because we did not get our user requirements right, and that meant then we have wasted time, we have wasted resources, and of course the impact will be minimal. Having this inclusion means that now we are getting our our, our user requirements right, and we can be able to develop better solution. Another part of inclusivity has been we as technology people we've always been blamed like we do not understand the business. So what means is um, ICT is on this other side, creating their own solutions. Our business or our programs are on the other side, trying to create a proposal on health or humanitarian response and name it. So at some point there has been this disconnect. So you bring a solution to the people, but they still do not understand. Why did you pick that solution? We were not involved. They do not own it. So they do not use the solution. So you use a lot of money bringing in the technology solution, but ending up nobody is using it or the uptake is very poor. But having our programs team, having our CEOs on board in this, in this net hope conversations, our operations team, all of them, then it means we are getting things right. We are having the conversations together. As a business partner working with Christian Aid, nowadays I sit through proposal design and, 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 and discussion. So I can be able to understand what exactly are the, the, the projects and the programs that are being developed for Christian aid. And I can wear now my technology hat and say, hey, look, I believe here we can be able to use a certain technology that can be able to make our program more efficient and probably even reach a bigger impact. So inclusivity within the NetHope uh, conversation is really a great, a great, um, a great addition and a great celebration as we celebrate our 20 years. And the last one I think has been, technology is a male dominated space. But I think as we are seeing, even from the, the, the speakers, we are seeing more women come on board and uh, that means we are closing the gap on the, on the gender in the male dominated world. So I think those are some of the things that I could add in terms of saying it is now becoming an inclusive kind of 
conversation and partnership that people can be able now. It's a safe space, if you may, for people now they can be able to engage. The technocrats can be able to speak where their frustrations are. The programs teams can be able to say where their frustrations are. And I think together we can be able to find a solution that is creating more impact for our beneficiaries. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. One thing that I want to also add is throughout the past 20 years, we've shown that technology can not only transform organizations, it can actually transform lives. So we've achieved so much in those past 20 years. And now we have 20 plus years more to achieve even greater things, to scale impact, to transform the world that we know it, whether it is humanitarian, whether it's development, whether it's um, conservation. So when it comes to this bold idea of 20 more years, when you look at Christian Aid UK and you look at where it stands and where it sits within the larger NEHOP ecosystem, what do you envision 20 years of collective impact for the future to look like? Thank you so much for that. I think um for once we can say we are both speaking the same language because there's strategic alignment into what Christian Aid is speaking about or hopes to achieve in the next coming years and what NetHope hopes to to achieve in the next um, coming years. And I think one of them, climate change right now is at the heart of each and every person's uh, talk. So in our organization, we are talking about decarbonization. So I've been sitting through some of those meetings. And I think when we think about the decarbonization now from the IT side, of course it's to do with the power backups and um, having, having most of our power um, our power fluctuations in the various country offices means we have to look for alternative solutions. So uh, as we speak about what Christian Aid aims to achieve and what NetHope aims to achieve, I think for the first, uh, probably, I, would, I don't want to say for the first time, but I think we are getting right. We are getting right into listening to our members and knowing where they are so that we can all go together. So that's one of the things. And um, the other one that I would say in the next, in the next maybe 20 years is far, is very far, but I think in the coming years, I have seen this. So for instance, let me give the, the example I've given about the chatbot development. Um, so we did receive a grant from, from, uh, from Microsoft. So during the last chapter meeting, the African chapter meeting, we did have our CTO, Chris Lacey, come to present on what we are doing as Christian Aid on a technology front. And I think one of the projects that, um, that he presented there was um, a program that we've developed that is able to help people as they are going back to the office. And I, I, there was quite an excitement from the member community um, wanting to also have that in the various in their various uh, organizations. So I think there will be quite a lot of give and take. So it's not what is NetHope giving, but also what is the member organization giving. And I think with that, then we can be able to go far and we can be able to achieve to achieve much. If I think about um, some of the other things that maybe Christian Aid is struggling with, which I'll, I'm sure I'll still be speaking <laughs> for most of the member organization, and this mainly in Africa and the global south, the connectivity and infrastructure still remains a challenge in, especially Africa, it still remains a challenge. But I think I hope to see um, a situation whereby through our collective bargaining, then we can be able to have something that is going to solve our connectivity and infrastructure within the various countries of operation. It's still a headache for, for us to be able to get one, perhaps one connectivity provider that can be able to provide for all without any hassle within Africa. And I think that will be a game changer. I know we, uh, through NetHope, we are speaking about Marlink that is supposed, not Marlink, but Starlink. They're supposed to be bringing satellite um, connectivity within Africa. This is through, um, Musk, Elon Musk, uh, he's the one who is, who, is, who is trying to come up with that. Hopefully we can be able to resolve the, 
the connectivity and infrastructure within, within Africa. But it will take all of us to be able to do that. But the other one is power. I think power has also been another challenge. It's part of the, the infrastructure, but has been another challenge. And we are all looking for green energy and we are all thinking solar. As I said, solar is, is, is free. Why is the, is the solar setup very expensive? Is there a way, can we have a bargaining power with the solar vendors that you can be able to have this at affordable rate, but also together through the economy of skills, be able to put up mega grids within our areas of operation. So for instance, if I say we are working in, um, in Trukana in Kenya and we have various organizations working there, how can we be able to all of us have a mega, breed, a mega grid uh, built there for the community, but for the organizations that are working there, I think by that we are solving the solar or rather the connectivity, uh, not connectivity, but the power challenge that we've all been, been complaining about. So I think those are the very key ones because um, they still remain a challenge for our African uh, content, at least for the Asia Middle East, that's a bit sorted for, for, for now. Elizabeth, um, thank you so much for raising some key points. And one thing that I also believe is essential to know is that regardless of where you are on your journey, we all are working to get better. We are all working to have greater impact, to be more efficient, to be more cost effective, but to also really expand in terms of our impact. You mentioned a couple of things. You mentioned the interconnected nature of you know, society now. And you know, even as we try to make the world more interconnected, more connected. We as a community of organizations and members need to be more connected more than ever. And that's why we have this amazing summit that's coming up next week, a week long celebration of greatness. We also have our power. What is our power as organizations? What is our power as community? What is our power as individuals? And how can we use those big ideas like digital identity, like background and other things just to know that there is power in the numbers but as a community of change makers we can use that power for good and we have a week-long celebration that is really out of this world and i'm really excited to hear, hear from the speakers to hear from the plenary sessions the keynotes the networking opportunities it's so great and so amazing that we have something for everybody, regardless of where they are on their journey. For people that have come to Summit before, or people that are first time attendees of Summit, what is your advice for them as we go on this together? What is your one piece of advice for them that, hey, come on, come all, we're a community, let's do this and let's make some change for the next 20 plus years. What is your advice? Thank you so much. It is exciting to be celebrating 20 years of collective impact with, with NetHope. 20 years is not a small feat. So when you walk in um, into the virtual, it's virtual, yes, but uh, that does not cut down on the interaction that are available within the, the virtual space. And one of the things, once you learn there, please, it's a time to network. It's a time to build your network. We say network is our network. I think that's what we all say. So come there, ready to network, get those numbers, schedule those meetings within the, the, the platform because that's available. Reach out to that person. Maybe Brad Smith is there, the, the CEO network. Maybe that's the person you may ha never have another chance to speak with. But during that session, because he's there as one of the attendees and one of the speaker, it's your time. Take it, grab it. You have all the opportunity. We have great lineup of speakers that are available great organizations represented. So come and listen, come with a very open mind. Things have changed from the last from the last two years. I think there has been so much change from personally, career-wise, technology-wise, and the things that you believed and knew before the pandemic, probably you may have a change of heart, but you cannot have a change of heart if you don't come with an open mind. It's time to learn. 
because there is a lot, a lot to learn. There are challenges to be to be won. So come and participate in the challenge. You want to see, bring on your heart, your, your networking heart. You want to network, there is a coffee lounge, I think, uh, Tiga, there is coffee lounge where people can be able to randomly being matched. And that's a great opportunity for people to just meet those they have never met before. Don't go there and just interact with your colleagues. Don't interact with Elizabeth who you have seen and talked to before get somebody else get new people and interact and i think the other thing that uh, that is worth mentioning is um uh, looking forward to the to the summit is uh this is a male dominated uh technology space but i think there is quite a lineup, a great lineup of women in there. Not to say that the others are not, but I think it's one of the greatest milestones. And even me sitting here and being one of your net hosts, um, of your net hope uh, co-host i mean it's 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 quite a big fit and I, I i i celebrate this moment and i hope that it also be a moment to encourage other women and young girls out there that it's doable she's seated here it is doable and with the other leaders with the other speakers that we have we can say it is part of the takeaway as you go this is a summit but it's not a summit like any other. The learnings that you take here, the relationships that you build here, the skills that you develop here, the CPE certificate that you're gonna get after the summit, please may it be a pathway to your next level of advancement in your career or rather scaling that project because you got the right connection, because you got the right relationship uh, and partner in the in the in the summit that you can be able to to develop so come all come to learn open your hearts because it's only through that that technology can be able to burst into your imagination thank you so much for joining our virtual coffee chat we are so glad and grateful that you are a member of our amazing community and thank you so much, Prisha and ADUK, for all the fantastic work they are doing around the world. Everybody, that's all we have for you. Make sure you go to our website for the summit, nehopeglobalsummit.org, where you can find the information on the agenda tracks, the speakers, the tickets, registration, and so much more. We can't wait to see you all virtually next week from the 15th to the 19th. We'll see you then.